you guys. I am so excited. We are at Rev Rides, and I am going to build this Bro, bike. This is supposed to be my video, not yours. What, what are you doing? What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Now, your eyes are not deceiving you. I am taller than Nathan, a little bit better looking. He does have a better beard. My name is Patrick and I am the general manager, store manager, jack of all trades, e-bike specialist, whatever you wanna call me, I am that guy. So I'm here, I'm gonna show you how to install the EBMX controller into our Segway X260 exact same thing as a Suron. And we're gonna go through everything, but first I wanna show you unboxing and what is inside. seen what's in the box, I'll go over everything that's included here shortly. I just wanted to go over the EBMX controller and go over the specs with you. There is a video that goes over this stuff in much more detail, but I'll run you through all the little bits. I'll link the video below. It's Progressive E. They have a full overview on this. I won't take up all your time on it. In that video, they talk about microfarads, why they're important. I'm just going to give you the quick overview. So it can handle 900 amps. The programming for this is on a VESC VESC controller, um, which is open source. They use it in airplanes, I believe in automotive as well. And if you can use this in an airplane, it's definitely something that I'm gonna trust. This thing is heavy. Um, not heavy in a bad way, but heavy in a good way. It is aluminum and injection molded. It has, instead of a plug, it has wires coming out of it, which some would say, I'd rather have a plug, but you see all the stuff that goes into this, so you see the connections. There, That would be a fat, huge, chunky plug, right? Um, which, there's not a lot of room that sits in between the controller and the back plate. So this helps to, you know, route all the wires and get everything where it needs to go. So if there's two wires that have to go up here, there's two wires that have to go down here, it's a lot easier to be able to route the wires. So as you can see on the back, it says EBMX Model X 9000. It says rated input 48 volt to 84 volt, peak input power of 40 kilowatts. 900 phase amps, max battery five, 500 amps, like I said earlier. So it has a 12 volt DC to DC converter built into this. So you don't have to buy a, a step down converter or anything like this. It will already run your lights on your Suron or, or Telaria, but if you wanted to add extra things, you can actually add them and it comes with the connector, which is right here. And you can wire in four different inputs that can control multiple different things, just can't go over five amps. So like lights, LEDs, fans, uh, if you're using this on something that's not a Suron, you could use it on something that's liquid cooled. This thing is a jack of all trades in itself. It's just a beast of a controller. This thing is, I think, extremely good looking. So I have something for billet aluminum. I don't know what it is, but I love it. So. For me, this thing looks rad. Comes in all types of colors, obviously. And this is the V1 controller. It will install identical to the V2 controller. In another video, we'll go over the differences between the V1 and the V2. So I'm gonna go over all these little cables, what this is and everything like that. Before I get started and going into all these things, understand that how this is installed is almost the exact same for a Telaria, for a Suron for uh, Telaria Triple X, so on and so forth. The bolts are gonna be in different areas, obviously, but the connections of all the wires gonna be the same. Now we will do a install 
on the Talaria as well. So stay tuned for that. The first thing that you need to do is look at this. On the back, there are links and information. Read it all, understand it all. There's spots for error codes. So if you ever run into an error or have any types of issues, there's troubleshooting, there's everything on here. So before you call anybody, ask anybody questions, refer to this and do not throw this away. If you did throw it away, screenshot this and you have it. So that's the card. You obviously got your controller. We just went over that. Now you have bolts to install. There are multiple holes on the sides of these. It lines up perfectly fine with the stock bolt holes. I'll show you how many spacers and how many washers you're gonna need. There's obviously a bunch because there's multiple bikes that this goes to. You can use it on pretty much anything. So it's nice that they give you these. And take note, there is Loctite on the bolt for your phase wires. This is very important. You want it to be Loctite. It also has lock washers for them. Get into that once we start installing everything. Next thing, we have the USB cables. Next, we have our, I believe, SW102. If you have a Talaria, this will look familiar. If you have a Suron, it won't. There's a power button, a mode button, up and down. We'll get into that later. Next, you have the thumb throttle. This is not what it sounds like. Why they call it a thumb throttle? I mean, because I guess it is a thumb throttle, but this is a brake. All said and done, it's a thumb throttle, but it's used for brake regen. This little weird thing is your Bluetooth adapter. So it plugs in and then you want to, you'll want to run this as high and away from metal as possible. So you get the best Bluetooth connection. It's not really going to matter where you put it. You have the Talaria and the Suron cables. Now you're like, well, which one's which? Okay. So if you look, there's a male and a female, basically. On the Talaria, that's how the plugs are. For you Suron guys, this is the cable that you use, the black with the white. Then next, this is for your DC. So for your 12 volt source, you have all your grounds and power wires and you can connect them up to whatever you would like. It's pretty awesome, honestly. And then you have your two to one. One is for your display and one is for the regen thumb throttle. And that is all of what's included in the box with the EBMX V1 and V2 controllers. Like I said, we will have an upcoming video explaining the differences between the V1 and the V2 controller. Now, I'm gonna warn you, this video is gonna get really long and it's gonna be very tedious and very detail oriented. So if that bores you, set it to two times so you can watch it twice as fast. Stop it and play it in normal speed when you need to. So enough of my babbling, let's get into installing this. First off, this bike is a very new bike. I don't know how many miles are on it, but. it was crashed uh, and there is a lot that was is wrong with this and we are gonna take care of that this bike is gonna live a new life but it was crashed very hard and so as you can see it doesn't have a tail doesn't have a front fender bars forks everything's tweaked um, we are going to resolve that First thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure your breaker is off. Then uh, disconnect your battery. So pull the, the plugs. And this plug, you're not going to reuse. Uh, it is gonna stay in the bike, but we'll get to that later on. Before we pull the battery out, I always make sure to turn the bike on. So if any power that may be left in the stock controller or anything like that will just kinda fade away and you won't get randomly shocked. So we're gonna pull the battery out. 
All right, so there's a bunch of bolts that need to come out. So we have bolts here, bolts here, up here, the ignition bolts up here, and then these five mils right here. Now you will have a bunch of miscellaneous bolts, a few different sizes. I would go ahead and put them in a bag or a bowl or a cup or something. These are obviously very nice, a couple bucks Harbor Freight or Amazon. These are not magnetic, they're stainless steel, so they won't stay, but it will stay in place where you put the tray. We're gonna take the screws out of this for the plastic tray. You'll notice those ones are, looks like maybe slightly shorter. Your three millimeter on these. And that's holding these wires in, so take note of that. Another three millimeter here. All right, and then this is a five millimeter. I'm gonna take both of these out. Power tools are so much faster. All right. Power. And now we can turn our ignition off. This is a four millimeter as well. All right, now you can pull this little tray out, right? Don't need that right now. And there's two more bolts at the top of the controller. And it's in a tight spot. You're gonna use your four millimeter. And the other. Now your controller is free. This plastic piece is in the way, so you're gonna remove that. That's a Phillips head. So there's two Phillips head screwdrivers right here. plastic piece will come out. Now this is what you will see behind your controller. So you have your phase wires, you have your plug, you have your two power wires. Now you're gonna wanna tip this back so it'll get you more access to everything. So we're gonna pull the wires down. That way they are out of the way of your ignition. And then we can pull the ignition out. See that? And instead of unplugging it or anything, we're just gonna set it off to the side. There's enough room there for that. And we're gonna go ahead and disconnect all these. It's just a little tab, you push on it and then pull. It makes a little popping noise. Another one, push, pull, push pull. So now those are out. So now you, as you can see here, we have the blue, green, and yellow phase wires. We also have the ground and the positive over on the other side of this bracket that you can't quite see. Now these you do not want to use an impact on. It's just the five millimeter. Hold the controller, crack them loose, crack all of them loose, and then it'll just make it easier to remove them. And I just separate it. Just go by hand. Makes it super easy. One thing you will notice, there's no Loctite on that. That's a big no-no. One thing to also notice before I finish, all the phase wires go down, they go to the motor. The red and the black phase wires go up, remember that. And so there you go. There they are side by side. They look very similar in shape and size, but they are definitely different. This is considerably lighter than the EBMX controller. So the stock controller weighs four pounds, 5.2 ounces. And the EBMX controller weighs six pounds, 14.1 ounces. So it is considerably heavier. And this is the back of the controller. So as you can see, they're definitely different. And if you see the posts, see how tiny those are compared to those? Considerably different. Other than that, looks pretty similar. Let's get this bad boy in there. All right, so as you see, the red and the black wires 
They sit really close on the stock controller. On the EVM X1, we're gonna have to take and slice this back a little bit because it's gonna go on either side of the controller. So one thing you wanna do first, there's tape here. Go ahead and just remove the tape. Also, try not to cut yourself. Next thing, be very careful when slicing this. I would slice very slowly and don't slice into your hand. Move your hand so you can't slice yourself. It is very easy to happen. I wouldn't know from experience. Okay, I might. We're gonna go that much, and then once I get the controller on, we'll see if I need to go any further. You can technically just pull this apart, it'll split it a little bit further. Now, I understand cutting wires or cutting near wires is dangerous, plus you may not feel comfortable. So there are scissors. These are obviously very handy. And then we have wire cutters, also known as dikes. I mean, people back in the day know what they were called. I don't know if that's a PC word. I'll probably have to beat that. Next, we're gonna dig into our bag of goodies. So obviously we have a bunch of bolts here. They're all Allens with quite a few washers. So we're gonna pull all the bigger bolts out and make sure they have a split washer, which I'll show you here in just a second. There's five of these, and this is what we call a split washer. There's a little split at the top. And then all the rest of these spacers, go ahead and put back in your little baggie because we're gonna use them later to mount the controller with the stock bolts. Now, as we showed prior, this has blue, green, yellow, U, V, W. And then we have a negative and a positive on each side. So we gotta make sure that we put those on each coinciding colors. So yellow is gonna go all the way over here, which was opposite of stock. So we're gonna have to move these around. I'd probably move them around to where they need to go before we start screwing them in. So green's gonna stay in the middle. Yellow is gonna come to the outside. And blue is gonna go to the other side. So we're gonna start at yellow and go towards blue. Now this can be a little bit of a pain by yourself, but I have done a lot more difficult things with my life. We're gonna go green. All right, so yellow first. Whatever you do, do not use an impact on these. Take your time, don't cross thread anything. And I already have the green, I already put the bolt on it. Do the same thing over here. Get them started a decent bit in there. So that way you can kind of put a little bit of tension on them while you're going in between the certain bolts. Now blue with the Allen. Now these are also called hex, but I'm a little older. So we call them Allen heads, Allen bolts, Allen screws, whatever you want to use. Now remember when I said the phase wires, how they go up? Well, you're gonna take them, the black is gonna go on that side, the positive is gonna go on that side. Now, I think I cut enough. Yes, I did. So that's what we're working with so far. I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolt in the red. These ones are a little bit more of a pain because that wound there in doesn't wanna work with you as much. started. Do the black one. Now you're probably wondering how tight can you get these? I would not go crazy tight with them. I just get them snug and then a little bit tighter. I know that's not a torque rating, but these are thick. They are very sturdy in the board, but you just don't want to, you don't want to risk it. And these are not going to back out with the Loctite and locking washers. I mean, you're gonna want everything to be straight. You don't want anything crooked when you're tightening these down. I do also suggest one of these uh, wobbly style ratchets. It's definitely a super nice thing to have. Treat yourself, you will love it. And if you don't believe me, try a regular ratchet. 
and then you try this in these types of areas, you will love it. Also one with a little bit longer handle is also appreciated. Little stubby ratchets work great too. I have one of those. Now let's start plugging more things in. The one thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna trim this off here so it doesn't split any more than it needs to. So I'm just gonna go in here and snip it a little bit and you should be able to kind of roll it around the corner, snip the other side. You should be able to just pretty much tear it off. Actually, I'm gonna use my trusty scissors. Rip that off, good to go. All right, so we're going to use our Suron harness. Now you have two that look like they would be the same, but they're not. And you want to keep this one sealed up until you're going to actually use it. That's your 12 volt. You'll see there's a notch on the top here and a notch right there. So I'm going to line those up and you'll feel it go into place. You can just go ahead and tighten it. And I'm going to take this an extra step further. Even though these are technically watertight, I'm going to electrical tape around these. Now, I don't know if you live in a wet climate, but we do. We're here in Vancouver, Washington. You could also look up Portland, Oregon. We are literally right across the bridge, less than a mile from Portland. So just kind of go a little bit down onto the connector and just wrap it on up. Gonna regret that later personally because I'm gonna put a version two controller in this, but I want you guys to know to do stuff like this. Now, when routing this stuff, you don't wanna go straight up to the top. There is a lot of extra room down here, so you're gonna wanna just kinda fish it down below, kinda through. The other reason you wanna cover these up is because they could potentially make contact you don't want to happen and then we're going to take this and there was the plugs that we undid and so you're, they're pretty obvious which goes into which and you're going to hear a little click and that means it's connected this three wire one we're going to tape up and you're not going to use that anymore so there's a couple notches it's pretty self-explanatory got a little little click electrical tape put a little piece on over the top of this, like so. I'm gonna do another one and then we're gonna wrap around it. You could also use heat shrink. I don't have heat shrink that's that large. So that stuff's gonna go up and tuck in, but we also have a few other cables. We got our one to two, now you'll look these are different, right? So they have different pinouts. So you just look at them and you'll see this one's the one that's round, not the other one. And there's a little notch and there's arrows. And you just line those arrows up. You'll know if it's not right because it won't go into place and then gives you like a little click. Again, I'm gonna tape these. Same situation, I am gonna Pull this one out of the way. I'm going to run this down a little bit before I go up with it. There is a lot. And this, I'm gonna put it through the frame and then I'm gonna pop it out where the key is. I am gonna plug the Bluetooth in because I don't want to forget to bring it up. So I'm just gonna plug this in here. Find the arrow right there and clickety clackety then i'm going to put this back up through here that will have hangout for the time being as well now we're at the point where we can start putting this on the bike and then we'll finish the wiring up once it's in place now this is the tedious part is getting these wires in a place that they are happy 
And I'm gonna go ahead and remove this fender because it's in my way, personally. And take the wires and tuck them back up where they go. into your bucket of bolts that you just recently took out of your bike when you disassemble it and you're going to make sure everything's lined up that you're not pinching any wires tighten this boy all right now that we have the controller installed we're going to put our plastic peeps back on remember this face is up and I'm not gonna put the screws in it until I get this part mounted up. All right, so we have our little Phillips head screws. This is a tricky little bugger to get lined back up. There's one and we're gonna put the other one over there. Sorry, I can't. The best angle in here. And then just go ahead and tighten that one in. You don't want to go too crazy on these because it's going into plastic. Now, the fun part is getting all this back in here, like so. Now we have that on there. We have this little spacer that's going to go in between the bracket and the actual controller. Use your Loctite. All right. Got that one started. Gonna get it in a few threads. Now the same on this side, we're gonna go ahead and get our bolt, our spacer. Gonna put some Loctite on our bolt. Our spacer in here. All right, so that one, get in snug. And then we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of Loctite on the bolt, and then get this one in there. Now this piece you don't necessarily have to put back in, but it's nice to keep dust and debris and water out of this area of the motor. Snug these up. Nothing too crazy, nothing too tight because if you go too much, which I slightly did there, you will squish the plastic. So there we go. And on these, don't go crazy tight, just snug and you should be good to go. Another little bit of Loctite. And this is gonna go up because that's gonna go on later. And you'll notice these wires will fit in this little tiny corner here. Another reason this type of ratchet's nice. And like I said, just snug on that one. And this one, you get a little tight-ish. That's the torque spec, tight-ish. You can put a washer on this side if you wanted to. I kind of like the look without the washer. You don't necessarily need it. We're gonna use the same button heads on this. Make sure there are no cables or anything um, in the way. Dab a Loctite. All right, now that one's nice and snug. Loctite on the next one. And we're just gonna go ahead and snug them down. So this little plastic piece could be used, but the bolts that are with the actual Segway slash Suron aren't the right thread pattern. So is what I'm gonna do, instead of running this little thing, this little wire clip, I'm just gonna put a zip tie on it through that hole. All right, so you got a little tiny zip tie. We're gonna go through that hole and back out. Once you have it out, go ahead and go around the wires. Pull the zip tie through. Now you don't need to go tight on the zip tie because you want it to be able them to still freely move and then always snip your zip ties and then i always twist the heads away so you don't see the heads of them 
And I went ahead and added a zip tie right in this area. The wires, or I guess those are probably a brake line and wire to uh, keep them together and out of the way. All right, so this plug you will not use anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape it up and then we're gonna tuck it back here out of the way. This is basically the communications with the controller and the battery, which stock controller isn't there anymore, so you don't need that. Excuse the broken lead, that is part of the accident. Another thing we need to get on order really quickly. All right, and so you're gonna still need these for your battery. Now you should be done, right? No, we got some controls to put on, so let's get to that. Next, we're gonna take the display and the switch off. Uh, you can program this to be a forward and a reverse. I personally think it is a little dangerous in a sense because if you accidentally hit this or somebody hits it just being funny because they knew it and you go to gas it and it's in reverse, you could slam into someone or something behind you. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this, plus your regen throttle and your display is gonna be on here. So it's just gonna get a little tight with a whole bunch of different switches and everything on here. So, so there's two screws, one here and one here, right on both sides. So we're gonna go ahead and get that out. And then I'll show you guys how to remove the display just in case you don't want to remove the switch. So these are the two screws you end up with. And then on the back side, there's two screws here. And as you can see, this display is beat up from the accident. So I don't even think this display works anymore. See the scratches and all that. And then it just slides out very carefully. But since this one is damaged, yeah, so this normally would slide out, but since this is so damaged, as you can see here, I'm not able to slide it out, but just slides this way or down out the bottom. So I'm gonna just go down inside here and I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect our little cable straps. I'm gonna find out where it plugs in and unplug it. So if you follow these all the way in, you'll find them plugged in right here. There are two larger plugs, which is great because they just take up a lot of room. So you will not need these anymore. And those are good and out of the way. Now you have even more room in there. All right, so your controls are gonna go right here, but your brake is in the way. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen this. And on this bike, we're gonna actually be replacing these with some TRP brakes coming soon in a video. We have our two to one, our thumb throttle and our display are gonna go right here. Take your three millimeter, loosen this up and go ahead and just put it on loosely wherever you feel you want it and then you'll adjust that later. And then on the bottom here, you have a 2.5 millimeter Allen that you're gonna need or hex wrench. And we're gonna go ahead and before we put that on, we're gonna take this little tie off and put that on right here. Put that on in here and it does not need to be tight. Just kind of put it in place. Now this is what I would do. You're more than welcome to try it any other way. Put your brake here, your thumb throttle to where it is not gonna hit your display. So the reason for this is you don't necessarily want your thumb throttle on the twist throttle side because you don't want to accidentally hit them both. You could. Also something we'll go over once we get into the app is you could actually turn this into an accelerator instead of your, your region. So it technically could be a thumb throttle. So that's a, another option and something that's also very cool about this is if you wanted to turn off your actual twist throttle and just use this, or let's just say you crashed and you broke your twist throttle, you could go into your app and you could switch it to your thumb throttle. So then your thr thumb throttle is now your throttle. You could get back to where you needed to go. Take our wires and we're gonna follow them to our brake. And we have these little ties that are stock that came with it. I'm gonna go ahead and put those on. And 
And to connect them, yellow goes with yellow, green goes with green. There is a little notch and there are arrows, same as before. Green is on, yellow. And then we're gonna go ahead and tuck all that in there. We're gonna do the same with these as the other connectors that we didn't use. We're gonna go ahead and tape them up and tuck them away. Before we tuck these in, we're gonna tuck our two to one wire in here. It's a little bit easier to do it that way than putting the plugs in and trying to weasel them around the plugs. Now the wire management is the most difficult part of all of this. So understand that this is such a small area, getting all these wires and plugs back in here is always a challenge. The Bluetooth connector, I'm gonna put that right down by the actual switch. So it took me a little bit to figure out the best way for hours to fit in. It obviously it's gonna be different for how you routed things. But so I pulled the two to one th out through here. And then once I get the actual ignition put back in, we'll tuck those in where they fit in. And so everything is gonna tuck basically right here off to the side. This is a tricky part. So you lift this up, it slides up underneath. And then once that's on there, then we can kind of get that on down in place. And then we'll put our sc screws in and then we'll go ahead and tuck these back up underneath. And make sure none of these are getting crimped or cut when you're tightening these down. So they still should have a little wiggle room. All right, don't go crazy on these. These will snap otherwise, and then you'll have to buy another one. Just snug, nothing wild. And there, all these are right where they should be. They're not too crimped down or anything like that. There's enough room up here. Probably give ourselves a tiny bit more slack. And you're gonna wanna basically twist your uh, handlebar side to side, make sure all the wires don't bind or pinch or pull. Looks like I have enough room here. I'm gonna go ahead and then tuck these back up underneath. I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie this right here. So it is out of the way. So we're gonna go ahead and zip tie that in place. One thing I always do is give a little bend on a, on a zip tie when it have to go around a corner. If you put a couple bends in it to where it kind of does that, you can usually get it to go right where you need it to go. And so now it's there. Just kind of guide it through. More than enough room. And we're gonna put this to where it doesn't get in the way. Snip that and we are good to go. Make sure all the wires are tucked. Now we just have our battery connector, our little fuse that can get tucked back in here. All right, now the moment you've all been waiting for, the battery can go in. Let's make sure our little cover is on there. Drops right in. Connect your battery up. So we're gonna wanna make sure to turn the breaker on. All right, we're gonna go ahead and turn this on. And we may get an error code, we may not. You're gonna go into your app store. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the screen here. Let's see, today is the 21st. We're gonna go ahead and search eBMX. Search. And you can see right here, this is the app. Now, this is where you'll find the app as well. You can scan one or the other. I'm on an iPhone. Now we're gonna go and open it up and it's going to search for my device. And you're gonna see, sometimes it'll show up as two connections. We just need to choose the one. And now we're in here. Now this is not a full tutorial of the app. This is just to get you started. So as you can see up on the top left, there is a warning. So there says fault code none, which is good. 
so you can see logs. It'll show you what faults have been on and what haven't. Uh, we're gonna go to the settings on the bottom right. We're gonna go to general. Now it already detects that it's a Suron Light B, a Suron, I didn't set any of these things, but we'll show you these really quickly. So as you can see, there's Suron Light B, Ultra B, Sting and other, or Tolaria Sting and other. Uh, we're already selected on the Light B. Motor type, it shows all these various different ones. All right, so it's just a standard Suron motor. Now your battery is a 16S if you have a stock battery. That's 60 volt, 16S. Battery model, 16S stock battery. I'll go back here. So you can see that there's stock battery Suron, stock Suron bypass, and then all the other ones. We are not bypassing the battery. We don't suggest bypassing the battery. That is up to you if you choose to do so. Stock battery, street mode current, race mode current, blah, blah, blah. You're gonna set all your uh, gear ratios, your wheel diameter, everything like that. We'll go over in the next video. Now, if your motor is spinning the wrong way, you wanna go down to where it says motor direction, anti-clockwise or clockwise. Ours is anti-clockwise. You can use a stock switch as a reverse gear. We aren't using it. You can also click restore defaults. We are Fahrenheit, we're doing miles per hour, and then you're gonna go ahead and save. Save is completed. There's a few things we want to go over for calibration. So I will go ahead and put the phone on the screen over here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the phone back on and then search for your device again. And then last connection. Now we are in the app. All right. So from the settings screen, which is on the bottom right of your main. So this is your dashboard. Go to the bottom right settings, controller calibration and we're gonna go twist throttle calibration. Setup process will be started in five seconds. So we will cl click the startup, start setup wizard. And then we're gonna have zero throttle for five seconds. And then we're gonna go full throttle for five seconds. And then we save. And then we're gonna set up the thumb throttle calibration. Same thing, we're gonna start with zero, go to full, start setup. So five seconds and we're gonna press it when it goes, to, right if it goes to zero. We're gonna go five. And then it's finished, we're gonna save it. Then as you can see, motor temperature cutoff will be at 212. Motor temperature cutoff end will be at 221. Um, we want the temperature center sensors on. Field weakening percentage. We're gonna start at 50 and we'll see where it goes from there. Slow voltage cutoff off. We're gonna do the whole sensor calibration. So this is probably the most important step overall. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure the bike is lifted, the rear tire is not set on anything, and we're gonna hit start. Now it's gonna do all this funky stuff. You can hear your motor make all these sorts of funky noises. Sweet. You don't wanna interrupt it or anything. It says successfully calibrated. And then I would not change any of the battery settings unless you have something custom. You're gonna go ahead and click save. Make sure you click save. If you do not click save, it will not change or help any of these settings. We're gonna go out of here and now the bike is set up. All right, and so the last little bits, I just wanted to show you what you're gonna see on the display. At the very top, you're gonna to see the miles per hour. So as you can see the miles per hour on the screen, you can see Ours is kind of pumped up right now. Explain to you really quick modes and the levels. All right, so into here, you will see our power level settings right here. This is just a generic on what I have right now. Feel free to mess around with it, but I will put on the screen what is suggested and what I have right here is pretty much suggested. 
Um, your motor phase amps, you would not want to exceed. This should actually be 400, but you can actually tap this and actually type in. This is why I left it wrong. Press okay, and so that's 400, 350, 300. Those are on our low, medium, and high settings. And you can click save once you made a change. Our reverse strength, we have it set for 90%. That's just what Jared and the guys from EBMX. And your street, this is what, uh, you can set them up however you want. Once you turn the bike off, turn the bike back on, it'll go right back into that same setting you were before. I'm just gonna stick it on race. That's what I'm gonna have it in for our quick little testing. And yeah, that should be all you would need in the app for immediate setup. And in our next video, I'll go over in complete detail of what you're gonna need. So as you can see, I'll go to our, I'll click save, because there's no changes, we'll go back out, we'll go to our dashboard, and as you can see. You can see the. You can see the kilowatts, you can see the motor RPM, the miles per hour, shows you what setting you're in. And I'll show you on the display here, I'll bring you closer. So I'd suggest uh, getting these snug before you make any adjustments. I'm actually gonna be replacing the bars because these are very bent, but I wanted to show you this first. So on the top, there's a little power button. It does absolutely nothing, so ignore it. There's the mode button, which is going to change your trip time, shows your motor power. Down at the bottom, there's a power bar and then your actual voltage, which is more accurate than an actual percentage. I know most people would prefer to have a percentage. Then you can see your motor temp, if you're ever concerned about that. Controller temp, as you can tell, it's very cold in here. Uh, and then back to the trip. So if you wanna change between race and street, you press the bottom button down and hold it, and it'll change into street. It'll show that little guy, and it'll say street. And then you have one, two, and three of those. Press it down again, it goes to race. And then you have one, two, and three of those. If you press and hold the mode button, you have an option to reset your trip information and you can go click motor. It'll show your average motor and max kilowatt, your average and max kilowatts. I'm gonna exit there. To enter more settings without having to go into your phone, you turn it on and within 10 seconds, you hold the mode button, it'll get into the settings and then you can go into here, you can change it that way. And then you can go into battery. You can change the battery from here. Um, your temperatures, your speed. You can add a password. And other than that, you can just go out of this by going up to exit. And that's pretty much all you need to know. So one last tip on bar setup to make sure that you have all this stuff in the right place. You don't want your thumb throttle to get in the way or, or hit your display. And then when you're setting up your brakes, I see this way too often, that people will have their brake levers up here like this, and then there's another friend of mine that had his brakes like this. Now, you can do whatever you want, but understand that if you're riding and your hand is up like this, your wrists are gonna get sore, you're overall gonna not be comfortable. What I always say is put your hands on your bars and put your fingers straight out and your levers should touch right underneath your hands and then tighten them down. And that will be the most comfortable possible because that's your standard riding. So be in your most comfortable position on the bike, put your hands on your bars and wherever your fingers go out, stretched out, that's where you want them. You don't want it to be up. You don't want it to be down. You want it to be nice and even because you have it this way, you get more stress on your wrist like this. And you gotta think if you're going over bumps, this is not the most optimal position of your wrist. So that's a big tip, something I would love everybody to remember. And your final thing to do is just to look at everything, make sure the controller is set in place, it's not loose, make sure all your wires are tied up and out of the way, uh, make sure there, you turn your bars from side to side, obviously have it in a wheel chalk, but make sure the, the wires are not pulling, if so, pull them out a little bit, zip tie them up so they're in the proper position and you're set and you're ready to ride. Take your time, uh, make sure you use Loctite, make sure you have some zip ties handy. 
Make sure if you have any questions whatsoever, refer back to your card. Don't stress out about it. It's likely just a simple setting. If you get too stumped, there is a Facebook group that's dedicated to all the EBMX customers for controllers, motors, everything like that. You can hop on there. So if it's late at night and you can't get a hold of us or wherever you bought your controller from, you can get on there, ask some questions. You can feel free to email us. All of our email and contact information is below. Fastest way is just hop on the website, go to the contact us portion of the website and just send us a message there. It goes right to a central location that gets to all of us. I appreciate you guys watching this long. I know it gets really tedious and long, but it's all the information that you guys need to be successful on installing your controller. If you like this content, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, drop a comment down below. And if you're ever in the area, come and ride with us. What are you doing? Yeah. Hey, this is my video. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Okay. Wait, where's my wrench? Did you take my wrench, bro? <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> oh. Perfect. Okay.